So welcome to our talk at five about Cumulus, uh, Linux for n uh, network switching. So uh, let me introduce Nolan Lake. So please give him a warm applause. All right, thank you. I'm here to talk about Cumulus Linux, which is a uh, Linux distribution for network switches. So Cumulus Linux is Debian derived very heavily. In fact, many of the packages uh, in Cumulus Linux come straight from the Debian repo. Um, some have patches added on top of the Debian patches by us, which obviously then we would rebuild, and then of course some are entirely new. If you're familiar with uh, kind of more common uh, network switch operating systems like you know proprietary ones like uh, Cisco's NXOS or Juniper's Junos, uh, you probably expect a network switch to have some sort of weird CLI that you have to learn with you know a bunch of commands and kind of a limited functionality set exposed by those commands. Cumulus Linux is not like that at all. We have no proprietary CLI. The CLI is bash. If you SSH into the switch, you just get a bash prompt. Um, all of the front panel ports show up just as Ethernet devices, just like ETH0, ETH1. Um, and all of the commands you kind of have come to uh, know and love for configuring networking on Linux just work out of the box. And so you, know, you can use any program that, uh, that works on Linux on the Cumulus Linux switch. For example, you can, for DHCP, we just use ISC DHCP. For routing protocols, instead of writing our own OSPF and, Quag uh, OSPF and BGP, we just use Quagga. But if you prefer Bird, you know, you can just install it and use it. But let me back up a bit and talk about what a switch is. So, you know, we have a set of hardware partners that uh, manufacture switches, often the same ones that you would buy with a proprietary OS on them, or a fully proprietary OS, I'll get into that. Uh, but internally, these things are just a little computer. Some of them have power PCs, some have Intel chips, um, some even have ARM now. Um, and they have RAM, they have storage. So it ends up being relatively straightforward to run Linux on them. The only thing that's unusual about them is that they have a really big ASIC right in the middle that's PCI Express attached to the CPU. And that is the, the piece that connects to all those front panel ports. This one, for example, has 48 10 gig ports and four 40 gig ports, which is kind of a lot of uh, networking capacity to plug into a server. So that's why it has that special ASIC. That's going to actually handle all the networking functionality and hardware. So the software architecture is generally breaks down to exactly what you'd expect with one kind of caveat. There's a ton tap device created for each one of these uh, front panel ports that's then you know, behind the scenes connected to the actual front panel port for handling traffic to and from the CPU itself. But then all of the other kind of data structures, instead of being proprietary uh, in a big blob of proprietary software like most network operating systems, we just use the kernel's data structure. So for example, the routing table, that's just the kernel routing table. Uh, bridge configuration, that's just whatever you threw together with VRCTL. And similarly, instead of some, uh, the ACL table is just IB tab IP tables and EB tables. So it's all stuff probably everyone in this room knows how to configure. And also there's a huge amount of software that knows how to drive. And so we have you know, some prerequisites. Obviously, you, know, you need some way to install on a switch, right? Normally when you buy a switch, the, the OS is already baked in there, right? So it came from the factory as kind of one appliance. To kind of break these things open and separate the hardware and software, we needed some way to install. We needed something on the switch when it came out of the factory. And so that thing is something called Oni. Um, which we've actually contributed to the Open Compute project. What ONI is, is a small, very minimal network uh, distribution, unlike Cumulus Linux, which is based on Debian and has a huge set of functionality. This is a stripped down little busy box thing. And its sole goal in life is to boot up and play the role that Pixie does on servers, only to be a lot better, right? Pixie kind of sucks, who likes using TFTP, you know, it doesn't support IPv6, I mean, it's, it's, it's not great. So with the base of, of Linux under it, it was very easy to do things like support uh, IPv6 to allow you to install over SFTP instead of using TFTP or you know, HTTPS or you know, whatever, whatever is convenient in your environment. And this is just used at install time. Once the, once the switch is booted into ONI and it's found an image to install, hopefully Cumulus Linux, but there are others available, uh, this is no longer involved. It will then dire boot directly into the, the real operating system. And so I wanted to talk a bit about our contributions. Um, so we've, uh, we're 
one of the largest contributors to Quagga today because this is the routing protocol suite we, we opted to use. And so we did a large amount of work on the OSPF, in particular the OSPF v3 implementation, which is what you use for IPv6. Uh, and we've al also done a large amount of work on the BGP implementation. And so this is all stuff we've upstreamed back to Quagga. So this is all very, um, you know, we, we don't keep any patches uh, proprietary. Um, and then the, the kernel, we've been contributing heavily there. Uh, we, we were bad about that for a little while, but we, we've uh, gotten our patch backlog uh, mostly upstreamed, so there's still a little bit left to go there. And then relevant to Debian, we've uh, actually rewritten uh, if up down. So that's, as I'm sure most of you know, the tool that manages Etsy network interfaces. And if you've ever looked at it, it's uh, written in this weird literate programming language thing. I believe it's CWeb or NoWeb. I can't remember which one offhand. So it was exceedingly hard to modify and work on. So we uh, rewrote it in Python. And we did some things like adding template libraries. We used Mako for that. And the thing that motivated, there were a couple of things that motivated us to do this. The biggest one was just scalability. When you have 48 or 52 front panel ports and you have a large number of VLAN sub-interfaces hanging off of them put into bridges, you can end up with thousands of interfaces. And if up, down, one was not uh, scaling particularly well to that. Uh, the other big thing we had we fixed was <coughs> that with if up, down, one, the order of the interfaces in the file is extremely important. Um, you know, if, if you put the, the VLAN sub-interfaces before the bridge that, that includes them, you know, it won't work. It, if up won't, won't actually bring them all up. And so what if up down two does is does a sort of all the interfaces in dependency order and brings them up in order such that the, you know, each step will succeed and when you're done you have the full, um, uh, the full configuration up. And one other thing we added was reload support. So the ability to edit the Etsy network interfaces file and do, you know, basically networking reload that compares the current state in the kernel and the new config file and figures out what the minimal changes of uh, non-disruptive changes required to bring the, the kernel up to date. We're currently working uh, with some folks to try to get this as an actual package in Debian. Um, we, it's, we're not there yet, but uh, we're definitely working on that. Um, now we'll get down to the low light. Um, so I hope nobody brought fruit to throw. We do have one proprietary piece. Uh, if we go back to the diagram, it's the, the red part in the corner. It's actually, this diagram is slightly wrong. The, the part in the kernel is actually GPL. Uh, we, we worked with the, um, the hardware vendor to get them to open that up so that we didn't have to have a, a proprietary kernel module because that would have been bad. But the, the part up there, switch D, that is actually proprietary because it talks directly to the ASIC. In this case, it's a Broadcom ASIC. So who here has dealt with Broadcom? in the past, uh, okay, so y y you know what's going on. Um, so we, we got the, pro uh, the information needed to program this under an NDA. Um, it links against their software development kit, which is obviously proprietary. Um, the good news is that Cumulus Linux, the, op the entirely open source part, is still completely functional and actually very usable without this piece. All you lose is you, can't, you can no longer run it on an actual switch. You can still run it in a VM to be like a router VM or a switch VM. You can still run it on an x86 server if you, had, if you wanted to build you know, a router out of that. All of, the, all of that other functionality, you know, if up, down, two, all of the, the Quagga routing protocol enhancements, all of those are still baked in. Um, in fact, you can download a VM image of this from our website if you'd like to try it out. So um, we are trying to get towards a, a better future here, though. Um, we've been working, actually, we, we were involved in the initiation of a project to bring switch dev into the, the kernel. This is similar in spirit to net dev. Net dev is a way to, to describe NICs. So you could have different drivers for your different NICs. You get you know, your ETH0. Switch dev is the same thing, but for these switching ASICs. Um, the big problem that we're running into, of course, is these vendors are all extremely paranoid about their uh, programming specs. I, I make the argument fairly frequently that, hey, the more people who know how to program your chips, the more people write software for your chips, and then the more people will buy your chips. But the, uh, the hardware industry is, is um, a little paranoid. Um, so, you know, we've, we've seen a couple of responses. Some vendors are just absolutely no. Like, we don't want to have anything to do with this. Others decide, oh, no problem, we're going to open source our driver, and then you get it, and it's a bunch of one-line stubs that RPC across to an ARM core on the chip that's running the giant proprietary blob, which doesn't seem like it's really any better. So this is going to be a slog. Um, it's going to be a long road. Um, I'm optimistic that we can um, get to the end of this road in a satis satisfactory manner, but uh, it's definitely not going to be easy.
Um, so that's all of the material I had. Did any questions? Uh, this one. In terms of the drivers for the various ASICs and SOCs, have you, I hope you've heard of Open Data Plane. Open Data Plane, yeah, that one is focused, so um, I may, may have, should probably no. should have elaborated a bit more. We're entirely focused on actual fixed function forwarding ASICs. Sure. So Open Data Plane is more around SOCs like Caviums that have, most of the forwarding is done in software, but they have offloads to, to offload certain ha uh, fast paths. So this is very different. All of the forwarding is done in hardware here. Sure. There's okay. no, no, there's no fast, fast, fast. I should mention I work for Lenovo in the networking group, so oh, I great. know the people who develop Open Data Plane. Oh, maybe um, we should talk afterwards. Uh, uh, absolutely, yes. So you said this is um, just a normal bash, and I can use all the usual tools, but. Um, the advantage of iOS, iXSR, what have you, is um, I'm kind of protected, at least in some circumstances, against executing things which are then executed on the CPU and not on the sil silicon anymore. So did you build any safeguards which tell me, okay, you are about to leave uh, whatever the silicon can do, and you will need to enter CPU, town, uh, CPU land and just break all performance? Yes, absolutely. So we actually never fall back to the CPU because the performance disparity between these CPUs and the, you know the, the highest end parts can do you know two and a half terabits per second of switching. You know the CPU is, can't do a hundredth of that. Um, so we'll we'll never actually fall back to software. We'll, we'll almost all scenarios on all normal scenarios where you would end up not being able to do it in hardware, we'll warn you and roll back the change. Um, there's a couple of minor kind of edge cases where that's not happening today. We consider those bugs to be fixed. Um, if I understand correctly, Cumulus is um, Debian derivatives, right? Mm -hmm. How different is it from Debian? We try to make it as minimal, as close as possible for the most part. Um, you know, we, we actually use just Debian uh, binary packages for probably 90% of the packages in the system. Things like Quagga, we've worked on extensively, so we have our own version that's kind of managed. Same with the kernel. Um, and we've added some software. We switched from using if up down, down to if up down to. Uh, but for the most part, it's um, yeah. Debian. Right now we're Wheezy based. We're in the middle of the uh, process of porting forward to uh, Jesse. It's, it's, it'll be in the next release. It's gonna, gonna be a, a bit of a time though. Or is that just that 48 port uh, one chassis that you're targeting? So right now, I mean, we, we don't have any philosophical uh, ties to any particular hardware form factor. Right now it's these, you know, 10 plus 40 uh, uplink switches uh, with either four or six 40 gig uplinks. We also have 32 by 40, um, you know, 32 by 100 is coming soon. Um, we also have one gig switches that are 48, one gig plus, you know, four 10 gig uplinks. Um, but, so but still just one chassis. Yeah, so philosophically, that I was, yeah, that we're not philosophical about that. What we are philosophical about is n we don't do stacking. Um, okay. The problem with stacking and these kind of like chassis where chassis protocols is they're incredibly proprietary and incredibly brittle. And so they're great when they work, but when they don't, you're kind of at the vendor's mercy. So we actually, what our, what our customers tend to do is use tools like Ansible or Puppet to orchestrate all the switches. And they tend to do more L3 instead of L2. So they end up using open protocols like IBGP or OSPF to kind of stitch all of this together. So that way when something goes wrong, you can go dump all the OFPF state and say, oh yeah, the adjacency didn't form on this link right here and that's why this other path is getting overloaded. Let's figure out why. Or you know, the Mac is missing on this machine for some reason. Let's go figure out what happened. Yeah. How, what do you think about um, the, the roadmaps uh, that other vendors are following, like uh, putting compute and switching onto the same box, putting VMs onto the same box? Uh, I mean, I view them as following us, right? It's like, we didn't have to do anything to let you put a VM on our box. You just app get install KVM and off you go. Okay, but th that's already something that you intend to, to do with this box. Oh, we've done that from the beginning. Okay. I mean, we, the, I mean it, literally the first thing we did was bring up Linux on this thing, mm. and it, Debian specifically. And so it, we hadn't even implemented the hardware forwarding. So at that point, the only thing you could do on it is run VMs and things like that. Uh, do you, by default, uh, separate the management VM, um, or, or is the, the, the switch management uh, a, say, DOM zero, or is that a user VM, or is that 
So we, um, we don't support Zen, so you'd be using um, KVM in this case. And in a, in a default use case, if you're just using the box, you wouldn't have any VMs. There's just the host kernel, and you know its routing table is what the hardware is forwarding. And you know we do have management separation, so you can have separate routing tables for the you know Ethernet Eth zero kind of management port uh, versus the actual data plane ports. But that's just using you know IP rule and you know the multiple routing table support that's already in the kernel. What about fancy stuff like uh, NetFlow and uh, eVPN? Um, we support SFlow, <laughs> um, not NetFlow. That's I think that's a Cisco proprietary one, so we'd be less likely to support that one. Um, eVPN is something we're working on in the context of carrying VXLAN VNI tags around, but uh, we don't have that in a shipping uh, version yet. But it's something that would be totally reasonable to do. And unlike most vendors, if you decided you wanted it and you had a Emacs open and a C compiler, you could hack our Quagga to do it. Or Thanks. Are you committed to VXLAN, or are you also, pl uh, also planning to support MPLS fully? Um, we are working on MPLS. I don't know how fully we would support it. Um, I don't know if we're going to try to replace, you know, big telephone company carrier routers MPLS. But for the uses of MPLS inside the data center and between kind of adjacent data centers, that's definitely stuff we consider and are working on. So uh, when you look at long-term stability, uh, take a s Catalyst 6500, they may be old, but they run for years and they do what they need to do. Um, how, as of today, do you view Cumulu uh, Cumulus Linux? Can I just deploy it now and have it run for five years, as of right now? Or do you have a, a realistic expectation of when you reach that point? As soon as I secure the machi a machine, I can just keep it running forever? Yeah, I mean, we've... We've only been around for five and a half years, so there haven't been any running for five years. But we do have a large customer that's been running approximately 30,000 switches, running Cumulus Linux for two plus years now, and no no major issues. Yeah, but anyone at that scale would probably uh, upgrade quite aggressively because they just can. But sometimes you have machines in places where you cannot really do that. So uh, is this anything you're looking at, or are you basically uh, saying people just need to upgrade regularly, and that's that? Well, we would generally advise people to upgrade, but we do provide security patches to older versions. So we're not going to leave people like high and dry, but any sort of new functionality or bug fixes that aren't security relevant, the older releases just aren't going to get them. Okay. Um, when you say you uh, support Quagga, but you, you're also able to run BERT, uh, I prefer Quagga, so that's good. But um, what are you doing about the performance of Quagga, especially when it comes to BGP, if you've got large routing tables? So are you looking at multi-core? Because BERT is really, really quick, and Quagga is really, really slow. Yeah, we've been doing a lot of work on Quagga performance and scalability. We've improved it, um, probably not as much as it needs to be improved, so we're still working on it. But uh, and we also did things like for a high number of sessions, we switched using ePoll instead of select. Um, you know, so th These are all things that we consider and, and fix, test actually first, and then fix when we find it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, so 30,000 switches, that's a production use case, is it? Mm -hmm. Uh, how about uh, 1x on the ports, PoE on the ports, and uh, during upgrades that you mentioned, is the switching going to continue on the pure ASIC level, or so is the entire switch rebooting? We don't do ISSU, um, and that's another one of these philosophical points. I would, I would say you would should build a denser interconnected network such that you can take down a single switch, upgrade it, bring it back up into the adjacency, and no one would even notice. And so then you can do a rolling upgrade. Because the problem with ISSU is it's a really complicated thing. You're persisting all of the live runtime state of the software somewhere, rebooting, and then reloading that with a totally new version of the code reading that old state and then trying to like you know pick up where it left off including things like you know not breaking connections to bgp peers so like remembering what sequence number you're at and you know where the bgp state machine was at and this this ends up being pretty brutal yeah but the point is if you don't support stacking you don't have the option to put a downlink uh server into a, a dual home scenario uh, so we like support VPC or something like we that. We support MLAG, so you can have a, a server with two links that are bonded together to a pair of top rack switches, and then the spine should be redundant using routing protocols. So, if you if you architect the network with redundancy at every level, you can do a rolling upgrade across it with zero downtime. So, which part of your switches would be spine and leaf? All of them. Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, was there one more? Yeah, we're running out of time. Yeah, so you said you support MLAG. How do you do that? Is that uh, part of the propriety switch D? Um, there is one tiny little piece that's currently in there. We're working on pulling that out, and probably we'll have that pulled out in the next month or so. Um, the rest of it's just a Python program that is a 
complicated state machine talking. MLEG is a very complicated thing. I didn't want to do it, but uh, people really, really like it. So we, um, <laughs> so, so we did it. But um, it's all just essentially just a Python program. It manipulates the bridging state and the, the STP blocking state of various things. Um, and then we had to modify the uh, MSTPD we used to obviously be MLEG aware, and they coordinate with each other. Uh, and then there's also some EB table rules that get added at various times. But it, um, I mean, it's it's all the same thing you would do in a proprietary MLAG. It's just we're reusing the kernel constructs because they're already there. Because hey, they're there. Let's, let's just use them. And we had to modify the kernel a bit as well. We're trying to get that upstreamed as well. Most of it's already upstreamed. Excellent. <laughs> Very good. Uh, John, John was just filling in that actually I misspoke. Most of our patches have already been accepted upstream, so there's only a handful still left to do MLAG support uh, that are not upstreamed yet. Still working on those. Okay, thank you very much. All right, thank you.